Greetings fellow Arkham Forge users. My name is James Smith and I'm here by somewhat popular to me with some advanced techniques for Master's Toolkit by Arkham Forge. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I've been involved with this hobby for about 33 years, since 1985. Most of that time has been spent as a Game Master. I started playing with the Red Box edition of Dungeons and Dragons and I've moved through all of the editions all the way through 3.5. I've played a multitude of tabletop RPGs, including Torg, both editions both from the 90s and the current Torg Eternity, all three settings of the Deadlands Classic rule set, Shadowrun, and the World of Darkness. Currently, our favorite game to play at my place, here at the uh, Knights of the Smith Dinner Table group, is Pathfinder. There are lots of smaller games that I've played over the years and GM'd, and honestly, after more than 30 years in the hobby, I can't remember all of them. Now, onto the real reason you're all here today, I'm going to cover some of the... Uh, slightly advanced wall techniques. I'm going to keep this video relatively short as it is after all my first time dipping my feet into this. Alright, so one of the big things I see first is curved walls and we'll get to that. The first thing I actually want to cover is large walls. So as you can see right down here in the corner um, uh, as you can see, I've got my UI kind of set up a little differently than what the standard UI is. The palette tool is movable and everything, so I move it all over the place when I'm working. Um, excuse me. So down here, when we select our walls, we got the width, the little width slider. So you've got your standard walls. Do, 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 do. As you slide the slider up, when you get to about the eye, right about there, you're going to notice that the wall becomes about the size of a square. When you're placing large walls like this, it's important to note, if you look, if you just start on the edge like I did here, you kind of go past it. However, if you start in the center of the square, and by the way, whenever I place walls, I always align walls to grid. Unless it's got some weird funky wall for ease of play, especially when tokens come out officially, or if you use them like I do as objects in the in the actual toolkit, um, it really is helpful to have the walls aligned with the grids. So that way, the players can maximize the space that they're playing in. And as we create the large wall, as you can see, same length. However, as it scales up, the artwork becomes a little less. Um, the DPI doesn't really translate walls you get larger. This one doesn't look bad. There's a couple of walls, and it may have been fixed in the latest patch. But there's a couple of walls that when you zoom out or get them larger like that, I think this is the one. Not that guy, this guy. So like this guy, when you get up to the one square width, or if you drag the slider all the way to the right, you get the two square width. Now, like that, it's not too bad. Um, but as you get the larger walls, especially when you're trying to fill in walls, because you'll see in some of the maps that I do in the future, when I got a large section where, like say inside of a cave instance, you got a large section of rock in between one place and the other, I like to use the freeform tool to kind of fill it in. And when you're making big walls like this, you use the freeform tool. That doesn't look so good. But I am getting ahead of myself there. So... As you can see, we've got the two different sizes of wall. The graphics kind of go down as the walls get larger. Not a big deal in most instances. Arkham Forge is already miles and miles ahead of all the other virtual tabletops out there with graphics. So I'm going to erase these other walls. Now, one of the biggest things that I see questions for, and I've seen it on the forums, I've seen it on the Facebook group, is how do I make curved walls? For instance, we're gonna we're gonna make, start at the basis of a of a excuse me of a wizard's tower here. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. We've got the circle tool. Oops, I almost did a really huge wall there with a circle tool. It does not look good. Not yet. Looking right at you, Nathan. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the cobblestone because the cobblestone is actually pretty easy to see. Go with the white cobblestone. So, the ways that you can do it, say you want to start, you got the circle tool. The circle tool is amazing. And it has its places, but for the ground level of something like a wizard's tower or guard's tower, 
the corner towers on castles and things like that and castle walls not going to be ideal for places where you want entrances <clears throat> excuse me so the other option we have is you can see here there's one two three four five six seven eight we'll make one the same size nice and large so that way it's easy to see especially on smaller screens whoops There we go. All right, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, this is a parallel method, and this is, it doesn't give you a perfect circle, but it gets really close. So, go out three and a half, go out through one and a half, two, three and a half. As you can see, it mostly has the same shape of a circle there. Now, this is where a few of the things that a lot of people have not figured out yet. So when you select the wall, as you can see, you got the three dots here. Um, if you click on the dots while holding down control, it goes to my favorite thing, snap to grid, and the shape of the circle is a little more defined. Then, say this is the ground level that we're dealing with. You can come over here, at a straight wall, yes, I know it's still straight, so zoom in, and then kind of eyeball your arc. Make sure that you center, and then you can kind of eyeball the arc, and that actually, surprising myself, looks really good. So as you zoom out, yeah, this one's a little off-center from this one. However, if you look, it almost looks identical in si shape and size. So if we zoom back in, and to kind of prove the point, we'll take this. That looks to be about the center. Um, I'm probably slightly off center, but as you can see, it's nearly a perfect circle that way. It takes time, it takes practice. If you use the technique that I showed, it it's actually pretty good. The other method you can use, now this one does not have quite the nice circular shape as this, but it can be really hard sometimes to get this right, this section right here kind of lined up perfect. So the other option you can use is you come in here. Whoops, there I go with the circle shape again. Don't mind me, this is my first time doing video like this. So you come in here, do, go out to eight, and this is just an arbitrary size. So one, two, three and a half, and then center, center. At this point, before you do the second line, make sure you right click or hit escape. You want to get that wall unselected because you're going to come right back in. You're going to start at the same point, go across the same distance, and then one, two, three, and a half. Oops, I lost count. One, two, three, and a half is right there. Kind of center it up. All right, looks like we need to take this out to four and four. Now we got a much better circle looking shape there and if we switch to the circle tool we actually have a point of reference here. Look at that it's a perfect circle again. Now because of the scaling on the circle tool it's kind of twitchy sometimes especially when you're using the, the excuse me especially when you're using the uh, center on grid option by holding down the control button. Okay so the way we put a door in this or window, what have you. Grab on one side, I'm gonna use the right side in this instance. You pop it out to the halfway point, come over, hit this one, pop it out to the halfway point, and voila, you have a door right in the middle of the bolt curved wall. Most of your players are not ever gonna notice a slight misshape in the circle. If they do, they're a little nitpicky, and not to be judgy, but do you really want that type of person? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, takes all kinds for our hobby. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so as you can see, we've got some good circles going. And that's the circle tool. That's the first method, which is you run two parallel lines and then stretch them out. And then you draw, like right over here, the little section that connects. And then there's the two lines that run on the same path, which in this case was this path here. And then I stretched them out to either side. All right. Now, for the next section, we're going to hop up a little bit. Say, for instance, 
this is our wizard's tower here. This is the ground floor. I'm not going to put a floor or anything in it yet. I'm going to cover floors because the tiling can get a little complicated, especially when you're running stairs from one floor to the next. So I'll cover, I'll have a whole video about that probably in a week or two. Be advised though, it might be a little longer. Um, my wife is pregnant. We're about to the end of the pregnancy. So I may have some time where I'm not going to be able to do another video for a couple, three weeks. Hopefully I'll have another one next week. So back to what I was saying. Here is where the circle tool shines. So we're going to go up a level. Actually, I think I had the center of this one better. Yep, so the center of this one is exactly one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So select the circle tool, hold control to center it, pull it out. Now, as you can see, it does not exactly match up. And in this instance, that is going to be a boon because with most tower shapes, they kind of crenellate in to a semi point. I know that they're flat long before they get to a point. However, in this instance, it kind of works out. Then we can go up another level, hit this, come out, and you can step it in another, or you can match it exactly your choice. In this instance, we're going to match it exactly, go up a third level, and you can keep going up levels and decreasing the size, or actually, if you let go of the control, you can control it to where it actually matches up a little better. So if you're wanting to steadily decrease the size, and there is the shadow error. Hey, Nathan, there it is, right there, see? <laughs> the way that you guys can fix this when you're working on stuff is if this happens to you, and as many maps as I make, I think I'm somewhere like 70 or 80 maps in at this point. I am a very prolific map maker. So change levels. Go back up, voila, and it's fixed. But that is a known issue. You don't have to report it to the Arkham Forge team. Nathan's already aware of it. He's working on it. It's, I think it is a layering issue. So as you can see, we're up to <clears throat> what's being called level three. However, in actuality, this is the fourth level. If you want to know the actual story that you're on, always add one onto this level here. Now, for the next thing, cave walls and the like. For this, we are actually going to switch to stone because, you know, caves don't have brick walls, cobblestone walls, whatever. We're going to switch to the freeform tool. And let's say we draw a little cave chamber. Okay. So, as you're going, one of the things that I like is the fact that we can stay on the freeform tool. Once we're on the freeform tool, if you have sections like this, we're right here, and let's say this comes around to here and back up to here. So what you can do in this instance is rather than leaving that blank, now what I typically do is I put black tiles down when I'm done. I also, if you notice, I've got a boundary wall and I will talk about that here in a minute. I always put boundaries on my maps before I start, just so that way I don't get carried away and just keep going and keep going and keep going. So back down to this guy here. All right, so when you're building large cave complexes and things like that, let's make sure we're on the freeform tool, make sure we've got the stone selected. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can come in here and your first layer, you can do this. And what we're going to do is, and do this a chunk at a time because I don't know if it's fixed yet. Hopefully it was fixed with the last patch, but every once in a while with the freeform tool, you'll draw a wall and it'll disappear completely. It's gone. No one knows where it's at. Once again, I think it's a layering issue. Um, I think that's what Nathan said, but I sometimes have troubles remembering the next day. I'm paramedic by trade, so I'm always busy. And I've always got things going through my head. And so we come over here. We get our second layer there. Now, I know what's going through some of your head. James, why aren't you using the bigger tool? Why are you first tracing it out? The reason is this. As you get the tool, <laughs> as... 
<clears throat> excuse me. As the wall size gets larger, the shadow that it creates gets much bigger. In most cases, when you're playing on the five foot square method here, like I've got going, that can actually cause the shadow to, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let's jump the width out to one square width, right? We're still on freeform, so as you go, say I get too close to the wall there, I let go, and look what happens to the shadows right in this area. They get huge. Um, and while realistically that makes sense, we are going for a combination of realism and artistry. Yeah, the shadows on the smaller walls, those are amazing. So what we'll do is, and here's where hotkeys are your friend. If you don't know the hotkeys, there is actually here in the settings, little button right here, that when you pop it up, it brings up all the hotkeys. My two favorite are Control Z, Control S. Hit Control S often. I know you guys haven't seen me do it during this video. However, I kind of didn't want to keep saving. And in all honesty, a lot of this stuff I'm going to wipe out because we're going to build a whole village here with this map. All right, so Control Z to undo that. I'm going to change back to here, zip it back down, zoom in. And when you're working on especially larger sections like this, break it up into smaller pieces. Like here, I'll do that section, and I'll come over here, and I'll probably come up to this point, and just break it down, because otherwise you're sitting there and you're doing long things, and if you mess something up, like say you come, oh crap, there I go. You just lost everything you did if you're doing it all in one mouse click. So make sure that you're taking a break and breaking it down into smaller, more bite-sized sections. So that way you don't lose a lot if you have to delete something. All right. So back to the freeform, and as I was saying, kind of fill it in around. And then, once you've got this in, and I've done this with much larger sections, and I may use some of the maps in the future that I've already done. However, all right, so I got a good size section there, right? And I come in, increase my width. I typically don't go much bigger than about a quarter of the bar. Click, and now as you can see, this is why I save this for farther inside. The wall, when it's done by itself, looks amazing. However, when you get to the larger sizes like this for fill, it starts to get a little blurry, and this is what I was talking about earlier with changing the size of the walls. It changes the way it looks and the way it reacts. Not majorly, but enough that you get this nice big blurry thing. So you can either do that, or you can come in and you can do what I do because I am an extremely patient person. I don't expect everybody to be as patient as me, but I'll fill this whole thing in like this. And unless you zoom in, let me go ahead and finish filling this in for you guys so you guys can see try and do longer strokes. The reason why I say longer strokes is because when you do little circular things like that, if you zoom in on it, as you can see, the same problem when we had the big wall. Got that kind of smear there. And as you look through here, you can see some of the smears too, but when you're using the longer strokes, those smears are in much smaller places. And when you're zoomed out to, that's about <clears throat> on my monitor, and I don't know how it's going to look on your monitor when you're watching this video, each of those squares are about an inch. So when it's zoomed out like that, you can't tell. That's why I always use a smaller one, whereas if you go with the big at this, even at this one, if you look, even there you can see that the swirls, which kind of ruin the effect that they were going for with the artistry there. All right, so that pretty much covers what I wanted to cover today. Um, in all honesty, the video ran a little longer than what I expected, but hey, you do what you can. If you got any questions or comments, put them in the section down below. And if you got any requests or anything, you can also throw those down in the, in the section below. Um, I know some of you were running documentation, and in all honesty, I'm not a big guy on the documentation. I'm one of those guys that I hop right in and I just do it. And if I don't know how to do it, I find a video. But on the object of documentation. If somebody wants to make a transcript of my video, feel free and go ahead and send it to me. Uh, you can either contact me through the Facebook users group or you can catch me on arkhamforge.com in the forums. My username there is Demetrianos. Other than that, I'm going to call this one a go. Uh, I'm going to call this one finished and everybody have a great time and enjoy your mapping.